Hey, welcome to Telemetry Overlay. When you first launch the software, you will be greeted with a preset selection screen. As you can see, there are some motorsports presets, but don't worry too much about it, you can change this later. So let's choose Car Circuit just for now. Then you will have to load your video footage. For this tutorial, we've got a couple of videos with embedded telemetry and a couple of external telemetry files recorded at the same time as the videos. These were recorded in formats that are compatible in Telemetry Overlay. So let's first import the video. We can just drag and drop it and let it optimize. Optionally, if you're in a hurry, you could skip the optimization process. This would make video playback within the program a bit more difficult or even impossible with some video formats. But if you already know your way around the software, it will be fine. The final result will be exactly the same. Then telemetry overlay will look for telemetry data embedded into the video. But if it doesn't find it, you can load it externally as we will see later. OK, and these are the gauges the program has created for us based on our car circuit preset selection. As you can see, there's a lap timer, orientation, the circuit map, speedometer, acceleration and linear acceleration, which loosely resembles throttle and brake. As you would expect, you can move gauges around, change their size, change the color of their elements, delete them, and that for every gauge, although the settings are different. Of course, you could change the units between kilometers, miles, knots, and so on. Let's now focus on one of the highlights of the circuit presets, the lap timer. Every lap time is calculated based on the finish line position, which was set automatically. So let's see how to set it properly. We can scroll the video to the position of the finish line. Let's pretend it's here. Select the lap timer gauge, scroll down from its settings, and then select finish line set here. To better see what is happening, let's unhide the path of the lap timer and make the finish line longer. Its length would also help identify laps, so make sure it doesn't cross other parts of the path. You could display just one lap for a cleaner visualization, or just hide the lap timer path if you prefer the more customizable GPS path option on the top right. OK, let's move this back to its place and see what happens if you select the car road preset instead. You can find all the presets in the pattern section, along with the option to save and load your own patterns. We will delete all the existing gauges and styles, and now we see that the road presets have some differences. There's a simple timer instead of a lap timer. The GPS map has different options, like being zoomable. You can of course find more information on the map options in other tutorials. There's a distance gauge, as if this was a rally, and other visual changes. In many cases, this timer will also need adjusting, so you can select it, look for the starting position in the video, go to Trim Timer on the bottom left, and set the timer to start there. We could add the milliseconds for more precision, and remove the hours if we don't need them. Now to demonstrate the motorcycling presets, let's switch projects. OK, let's apply the motor circuit preset. And the main difference we can notice is that there is a lean angle gauge now. This footage was provided by Stefan. I hope I'm pronouncing that somewhat correctly. Sorry if not. He records some amazing footage with the GoPro Max, so make sure to check out his channel. Instead of the current gauges, you could go to Add Gauge, select the racing gauges, and we can see that there are different options for lean angle here. Well, they are based on different parts of the data, different streams. 
Some data sources might record accurate orientation data and include the lean angle. Some others don't, and the program will try to guess what the best option is for each format. But you can experiment with it and maybe choose a better option for your use case. Let's add a standard lean angle by comparison to the two-wheel lean angle, which is based on GPS positions. But since this footage is coming from a GoPro and GoPros don't record absolute orientation, we will see some inaccuracies here. And as the motorbike goes straight, the angle doesn't go back to zero. So we can see how the other option is working better in this case. Another alternative, if you've got accurate lean angle data recorded by a device, but the program is not detecting it automatically, you can create a custom gauge. In this case, we would want a custom tilt, and then you can select where your good data is coming from. And this could be, for example, a column from a CSV file. But again, in this case, not the best option. So back to our racing car project, I encourage you to test different presets, even if they're not your sport. You could, for example, load the cycling preset and if you like the altitude versus distance gauge, for example, you can copy it to your preset, or you might prefer the style of the speedometer found in other gauges, so feel free to mix and match until you like the result. Okay, back to the default. And let's try to improve the GPS path. One thing we see here is there are double lines caused by the multiple laps. So similar to when we were trimming the timer, we can trim the path. So we'll go to the bottom left, set the path starting point, Scroll to the same point of the circuit one lap later and set the path end. And now it looks cleaner, we can also make it bigger. Telemetry overlay supports many external data formats like Race Capture, AIM, Alfano, Race Chrono, VBOX, Starlane, GPX, Fuel Tech, and many more. Now let's see how importing external data works. So we'll go to the telemetry section of the program and drag and drop the external data. In this case, we're using an AIM. CSV file recorded at the same time as the video, of course. The program will process it, and we will have a chance to reapply the preset with the new data. As you can see, out of the box, things look different. We've got a digital dashboard gauge that shows speed, gear, and RPM. We've got a steering wheel, which is not commonly recorded, but some formats support it. And we've got throttle and brake instead of the previous linear acceleration gauge. However, if we go to the beginning, the speed is too high when the car is barely moving. So that means the data is out of sync. If both the video, in this case the GoPro, and the external data had compatible GPS timestamps, they will sync automatically, but that is not always the case. So let's see how to fix that. Let's add a second simple speedometer for comparison. Scroll to the bottom. And assign the GoPro data to it for comparison. It looks fine. And on the bottom left, we've got the Sync Telemetry tab. There, we can see that the source to sync GoPro is synced to the video start, which is correct. But then the external data is also synced to the video start, and that is not correct. There are multiple ways to adjust sync. Let's see one of them. We'll go to the video start, and in this case, we know that the data is being recorded by the car itself. So when the car starts is when the data starts. Let's try to find the exact moment. And when we do, we press the starts now button. This will set an offset so that the data is in sync with the video. And if we play it back now, it's in sync. We could maybe fine tune it a little bit, but it's good enough. We don't need the GoPro speed anymore. And if your data started before the video, one alternative would be to use the offset slider. You would move it to the left until you found a sync point. But make sure to check out the other tutorials to learn the syncing strategy that works best for your use case. Like we've seen with the different lean angle options, there also are multiple acceleration gauges based on different sensors or data sources. The one just called accelerometer comes usually from a physical sensor that feels all the forces applied on the device. So as you can see, the direction is similar, but the values are much higher. And that is mainly because it's also measuring the force of gravity. So for racing on a flat surface, that's usually not the value you're interested in, but still a very good option for many applications. Okay, so we don't need that anymore. And let's talk about custom gauges. As you may know, some activity trackers record many more values than you see here, and that is the case for AIM. So we'll go to Settings, Enable Read Extra Streams, and Reimport or Reinterpret the Data. 
and now if we go to add gauge custom we will be presented with a range of styles which are quite similar to the other gauges you're used to so let's for example choose custom versus time which is a graph of the value for the duration of the project and because we are reading extra streams the IAM source contains lots of new data. For example, let's pick longitudinal acceleration, which is even a new source for acceleration data. In some cases, you want to trust the data that telemetry overlay selects for you. In some others, you might want to go into the extra streams and select something else that the tracker has recorded. You can shape the data with most of the custom styles, so feel free to try them and to experiment with the visual settings. Now let's see some alternative gauges for the data we're already seeing on the screen. For example, this is the standalone engine RPM gauge. And this is the gear gauge. Since this information is now repeated, we can bring back the other speedometer and delete the combined dashboard. This is how this looks. Like with the rest of the videos, I really appreciate users wanting to participate in this and providing such good quality footage and data. It's fantastic. And once we're happy with the result, we can go to the export section. And in most cases, the default export settings will be fine, but make sure to check out the other tutorials to get a better idea on the export options and best practices. This will take a while, so relax. I'll leave you with some rendered footage. Let me know if you've got questions. See you in the next one.